Stat number 10, the Elasmosaurus. This long-necked boy was first discovered in 1868. Shortly after the Civil War ended, a military doctor in Kansas found this fossil, probably threw up, and then passed it along to the American paleontologist Edward Drinker Cope, who named it the plesiosaur. Its neck contains 71 vertebrae, which is 11 more than anything we've seen, so it doesn't matter how it slept, you know that neck hurt the next day. The next day it's like, well, oh, I slept funny again. Its long neck was helpful for those deep dives. This thing did need to breathe while it was lurking underwater. It's a giant snorkel, basically. Just two years ago, scientists have unearthed the largest known elasmosaur. This thing has been sitting there since the Cretaceous period, so who knows what else is waiting for us. And before we continue with this list, if you want to go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, it pays for all of our dinosaur gear to discover the Antarctica. So please give us thumbs up and help us out so we can help you bring some info. Thanks so much. Back to this list. Number nine, the Kidos Troia. Also known as the Trojan Cetus or Monster of Troy, which I personally like a little bit better. It was a giant sea creature dragon sent by Poseidon himself to wipe out the land of Troy. How lovely. The King Lamadon refused to pay for buildings, so a sea dragon was sent to collect. Okay, times were rough back then, I guess. The only way to calm the beast was to sacrifice the king's daughter. Okay, I bet if she knew math, she'd be considered a witch anyway, so honestly, it doesn't even matter at this point. There's a painting of this thing on a vase from the 6th century. That's like the only evidence we have of it, but we now believe what they may have seen. Perhaps Poseidon didn't send this monster to collect tax money, but maybe they saw the Samotherium. The Samotherium is a prehistoric giraffe from the Zenozoic Age. The creator of the vase most likely found a fossil, which is much more fun than finding Poseidon's water horse, I think, and much more safe. Number eight, Siren. Coming straight from Greek mythology, sirens were half bird, half woman hybrids, and they were said to trick sailors and lure them out into harsh waters in peril. The top half is a human, bottom half is a bird. Kind of like a mermaid, but with more owl, I guess. According to mythology, there were two of these things that would hang out on an island in the western sea near the rocks of Scylla. Rumor has it, these were indeed the daughters of the sea god Phorcys or the river god Aculus. Either or sounds like bad news. In Homer's Odyssey, we can find some hot tips on how to avoid hearing their forbidden songs. Yeah, you thought seagulls were loud and annoying. Huh, buckle up. They had power behind their notes, so much so that in Homer's Odyssey, book 12, Odysseus was advised by Circe to put wax in their crew's ears so you don't hear them singing and then go mad. Odysseus wanted to hear the song so bad. Back in the day, they didn't have Spotify, so you heard someone whistle and you're like, oh my god, that's amazing, what is that? It was like live music. He of course wanted to hear it, but he tied himself to the ship to avoid steering the ship into annihilation. Fair. Mythological folklore or human dinosaur hybrid descendant with vocal cords of doom. Who knows? We almost saw something like this in the abandoned Jurassic Park four pitch years ago. They would have came out and just screamed at you and you would have just left the theater. Number seven, the Kraken. With most of the ocean still undiscovered, so many dinosaurs could just be lurking and waiting at the bottom. We have no idea. We discover some crazy new fish every other week, so it's just a matter of time, really. When thinking about the Kraken, some may think of the beast from a fantasy film about pirates, and that's great. We love that. The Kraken, though, originated from Nordic folklore. These ships would just simply disappear out of nowhere, and tales of a giant squid monster would often be the culprit. The first time we heard about this thing was back in 1180, but in reality, this thing is probably a older giant squid. There's also something called a colossal squid too, so, which as you can guess, is obviously even bigger. So who knows, this thing could trace back and be bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger with every million years. These live deep in the waters of Antarctica. These could for sure be descendants of dinosaurs, well, survivors, rather. The only places humans can't reach just happens to be home of these big, beautiful aquatic behemoths. What a coincidence, eh? Odd. Number six, Megalodon. Another beast lurking deep below. Let's keep this thalassophobia train rolling. The Megalodon is a big ass shark. You know this. A shark that, like dinosaurs, went extinct many moons ago. It was said to weigh about 50 tons on average, spanning 18 meters in length. Unlike any other fascinating creature, sharks can't leave behind fossils because, well, they have no bones. I guarantee you one person watching is like, really? Yeah, no bones. Just like gums, just like violent gums. So all we have left to study are their teeth. Their teeth were pretty intimidating also. Being able to say that the Megalodon once existed is a smooth transition into talking about the Mosasaurus. We saw this thing in Jurassic World, in some sea world-like exhibit, and the Mosasaurus existed back in the Mesozoic era just a mere 70 million years ago. Back then though, these things did have bones, and in 1764, skull fragments were found in St. Petersburg. Later on in 2012, a full skeleton was found in the same quarry. Dinosaurs are real, confirmed, pass it on. Number five, 
The Rock. Although Dwayne Johnston is probably as strong as a dinosaur, I'm not referring to that rock. This rock was a massive bird of prey that would take your children bit more violent. It was so large that it would carry a full-size elephant back home. I once saw a pigeon flying with a mouse downtown, so that's like the modern version of this. Much less fun, much more gross. The Rock was featured in four Arabian Nights stories, one of which involved Sinbad the Sailor. He claims that the giant bird carried him to safety after a shipwreck, safely to the giant nest, that is. See, Sinbad was able to escape this nest by tying himself to the Rock's leg, where he then flew so high he could no longer see the earth. That's pretty damn high. The rock seems to be a descendant of the elephant bird from Madagascar, the Apyronus. It went extinct in the 16th century, so maybe this ancient bird just happened to carry off Abraham like he was a New York rat. Times were crazy back then. The siren would call sailors over, the kraken would sink the ship, and the rock would carry survivors back to their 500 foot condo of a nest. I never wanted to live in that. Like, I, whoever lived in this time, you didn't make it. You didn't make it past two days. I'm so glad that I live now, like alive now. Back then, I would be the first to go. A bird would just pluck me out of the water and be gone. Number four, the bunyip. Shooting on over to the Australian outback, the bunyip lurked in swamps, creeks, basically any calm place where you would normally catch a frog. This beast would just jump on out and surprise you. It's quite fascinating. It had a round head, this long neck, and the body of an ox or a hippo. Just a big old body. Now these things could have been descendants from the giant Diprotodon or giant wombat. Giant wombat sounds a lot more fun. So ages ago, we think aboriginals discovered one of these or bones from one of these, and naturally the tail of the bunyip was soon carried along. Researchers have said that they also could have seen the Zygomaturus, which was this hippo-like creature that roamed the land 12,000 years ago. So it could have been anything. There's a link there. Round head, long neck. I was getting worried there for a second. Could this be my long lost uncle? Number three, Loch Ness Monster. I remember when I was younger, I would ground pound this thing's head to get a star. Since I was that young, I always had this idea that the Loch Ness Monster was real. Maybe it was Mario, maybe it was my drunk Scottish uncle convincing me that it was real when I was six, I, I don't know. The legend dates back to the sixth century in the life of St. Columbia, written by Adamnon. And according to the ancient author, a monster had appeared in the Loch Ness area. Irish monk St. Columbia was also in the area centuries later when he came across locals burying a man by the river River Ness. Apparently he was swimming in the river when a water beast attacked him and then, of course, no longer alive. Could this have been just a descendant from the Plesiosaurus? Full skeletons were discovered in England and the description is pretty uncanny, so ooh, dinosaurs. Thousands of years down the road, someone will be doing a top 10 list and be like, did giraffes exist? Did they swim in lakes? Look at these necks. I mean, these things for sure existed. It's just, you know, different centuries. They were much bigger and more menacing. Number two, dragons. Okay, we're getting close to the end of this list, so the ideas are now gonna get a little bit more daring, if I can say that. Dragons, okay, we've seen Khaleesi lay waste to an entire town riding one of these things. Donkey married and had dragon, donkey babies, and Shrek. Did these things once exist? Where do these come from? When folklore and fossils combine, history can get a little confusing. Millions of years ago, a flying reptile called a pterosaurus roamed the skies. It's now the closest thing we have to a real life dragon. A jaw fossil was analyzed after it was discovered in 2011, and scientists can now say that its wingspan was the length of a school bus. It was a skull attached to a long neck, bolted onto a pair of wings, said researcher Tim Richards. We know pterodactyls were real, so maybe this is possibly the family member in between dinos and dragons. What do you guys think? And finally, number one, unicorns. Yeah, I left unicorns last because they're unicorns. A horse with a horn on its head doesn't sound that far-fetched in terms of evolution after what we've heard on this list. It had appeared in ancient myths of India and China with the earliest description coming from Greek literature. It was described as a white horse with a purple head, blue eyes, and a long horn with a red tip. Perhaps these accounts were sightings of the Elasmotherium. These things were roaming around 10,000 years ago and it looked pretty similar, all things considered, because that was described as a hairy, long-horned rhinoceros ancestor that roamed the lands of Eurasia. So maybe the sun was hitting this beast just right and it looked quite, you know, majestical. One Chinese scroll described such a creature as a deer's body, a cow's tail, a sheep's head, horse legs, and a big horn. Skinny rhino or magical steed? You be the judge. Number 10, Telecrator ratinus. Birds and crocodiles are close relatives to dinosaurs. I'll explain this more in depth later on in this list, but dinosaurs are usually placed in either of those categories. Flying dinos on the bird side and beasts with massive jaws that can eat a car, of course, on the croc side. The Telecrator ratinus was found in Tanzania in their 245 million year old manda beds. So it's even older than the first known dinosaur. These things would be about seven to 10 feet long, weigh up to 70 pounds, of course, having razor sharp teeth. 
It had ankles that resembled that of a crocodile, but its neck was super long like a bird. And its skull was similar to a bird, but its jaw and everything was so strong. So they're like, okay, croc, bird, we don't know what this is. We could only identify this thing four years ago. And the fact that it's the oldest dino to date gives me hope that there's more out there hiding today. And when I say hope, I mean nightmares. This thing gives me nightmares. Number nine, two Atara lizards. Look guys, some lizards can shoot blood out of their eyes as a defense mechanism. I was gonna insert a clip of that, but I'd also love for you to get through the video and not throw up. So we'll just talk about the two Atara for now. These lizards have dark green scales, spiky spines, and these big black eyes. They're vulnerable to extinction now, as are many fascinating creatures, because humans suck, but 250 million years ago, they would hang out in what's now New Zealand, before it separated from the Gwanda supercontinent 80 million years ago. With temperatures on the rise, it doesn't seem like these dudes will be around for much longer, but you know what? I'm kind of okay with that. They've had their time. And if you're loving this list so far, if it's piquing your attention talking about lizards and dinosaurs, give us a thumbs up. Let us know if a part three is something you may want in the future or just anything in general that helps us out if you give us a thumbs up. Thank you so much. Number eight. Ostriches. I don't have to sweat too hard to convince you that an ostrich is a descendant of a velociraptor. Take the feathers away, add some Jurassic Park music. There you go, terrifying. Have you ever seen one of these things run before? Absolute nightmare. They've been running nonstop for about 66 million years. They're part of the theropod dinosaur family. Ornithomimidae were ostriches like dinosaurs. They had a light frame, they would grow up to 20 feet tall, and a pair of arms were found in Mongolia, and they were about eight feet long each. That's what I call a dinosaur. Scientists suggest that they were the fastest dinosaur to walk on Earth, and with thick thighs like that, I don't think anybody is gonna argue that. Number seven, crabs. Do you have crabs? You're a dinosaur. Sea spiders with claws and a shell skin. Yeah. That sounds pretty prehistoric. Crabs first started snipping about before dinosaurs went extinct, and as of today, there's TV shows about these things. Alaskan crab fishing is basically an extreme sport. One species of crab is quite unique during the olden days. 200 million years ago, the Megazambo Zog was the first to develop a claw. Now that is a huge step in evolution. One crab was actually around even before the dinosaurs, the horseshoe crab. Didn't have any claws or anything, but still, it's, look at this thing. If they're sticking around in waters today, odds are some other shellhead dinosaurs are also lurking about. Crustaceans, crabs, and lobsters predate most dinosaurs in general. They're the earliest known species of filter feeders. So yeah, dinosaurs still exist because they're a dinosaur. Go put your foot in the ocean. See how long you can hold it for. You're afraid, right? It's because dinosaurs. Number six, the claw of a moa. This New Zealand bird went extinct about 600 years ago, not that long ago at all in hindsight. It was this flightless bird, massive, might I add, and archeologists first discovered its fossil in a cave. Its flesh and everything was still attached, which is wild. Now these ancient birds would reach about five feet tall. When you think of dinosaurs, you probably think, okay, that's quite petite. But these birds stopped flying right after dinosaurs went extinct, which is the craziest part. According to biologist Matthew Phillips from the Australian National University in Canberra, these birds safely roamed the land after they didn't need to make daring dinoscapes into the sky. They walked around, they got fat, they would just hang out in caves. They were living the dream. Penguins, that's all I'm saying. Penguins are pretty fat and they just hang out. Phillips says this is an advantage when it comes to birds and evolution because wings, although they're cool, they're also big and they kill energy. Until every bird on the planet is fat and tired, I'm gonna look out for some deep sea dinos. I know they're still out there. I see a seagull, I'm like, what are you running from? Why aren't you fat? Hmm? Number five. Sea turtles. Back in the Cretaceous period, you could have hitched a ride on a sea turtle's back, finding Nemo style. An archelon, translating to first mighty turtle, was this massive five meter long, seven meter wide sea turtle, the largest to ever exist. They swam the coastal waters 65 million years ago, but still today, we're trying to save these dinosaur cousins. The first mighty turtle was discovered in 1895 by J.R. Wyland, and its beak was strong and sharp enough to cut through bone. Similar to modern leatherback turtles, today, the first mighty turtle was actually pretty peaceful. It was a predator. It was more of a prey, if anything. It couldn't tuck its head into its shell, so it was more vulnerable than anything. Save the turtles, yeah, save the dinosaurs, really. Number four, the Beals Buffo. 68 million years ago, catching frogs was probably also an extreme sport. The Beals Buffo, also known as the devil frog, which I'm gonna start saying, because Beals Buffo sounds wrong on many different levels. This frog didn't turn into a prince if you kissed it. In fact, if you got your face close enough, this thing would probably leave you without a nose. First of all, it was quite large. 
large for a frog. Well, large in general. It was about the size of a basketball and they lived on the island of Madagascar. Its bite was powerful enough to eat small dinosaurs. Scientists have compared the force of their bite to that of tigers and wolves. This prehistoric frog thrived in Madagascar because there weren't any theropod dinosaurs around. You didn't see a T-Rex canoe to Madagascar to hunt. That would be crazy. Obviously because their arms are too small. They can't paddle. That's the main reason. Recently, however, researchers have found a fossil of the devil frog and they believe that it once had spikes and a turtle-like shell. Bowser minions were taking out dinosaurs 60 million years ago. What a treat. Today though, the closest thing we do have to the devil frog is the horned frog. The horned frog has been nicknamed Jaws or Pac-Man because although its head is less than five centimeters wide, its bite would feel like three liters of water balanced on the end of your finger. That's strong, it's definitely gonna leave a mark or leave you without a finger, that too. Number three, Spinosaurus. If part one of this list made you fear the ocean, this next one here certainly won't help. The Spinosaurus, named after its mighty spine, of course, stopped the yard millions of years back in North Africa during the late Cretaceous period. Its remains were first discovered in 1912 by German paleontologist Ernst Stromer. But thanks to World War II and shitty humans, those remains were blown to smithereens. Paleontologist Nizar Ibrahim only two years ago discovered remains of another Spinosaurus in the Sahara, which today is just nothing but a dry wasteland, but millions of years ago, wasn't as dry. In the Cretaceous rock deposits, the team studied the tail of an ancient beast and it appears to be a giant fin. So now we believe that this dinosaur may have spent most of its life in water. Nice! With so much ocean unexplored, sailors telling tales of the Kraken, this dinosaur or some kind of version of it may just still be down there waiting for us to put our flippers on. Number two, crocodiles. If I described a crocodile to you without knowing I was talking about a crocodile, you'd probably guess it's a dinosaur of some sort. Yeah, this massive creature with rubbery skin, four legs, claws, tons of sharp teeth, and a big ass head, hides in water but attacks on land? Okay, good game. These things are fascinating. They've been around for about 200 million years. They outlived the dinosaurs and they would hunt dinosaurs. And now today, we still have to keep an eye out for them in swamps and lagoons and stuff or else they'll grab your leg and spin a thousand times until you're done. As soon as I heard that crocodiles eat rocks to stay underwater and hunt, I knew I was that's some next level stuff right there. 75 million years ago, the Dinosuchus was the largest predator in North American swamps. It was around 10 meters long, weighed about the same amount as a large elephant, and its jaws could snap today's crocs in half with their banana-sized teeth. Banana-sized teeth, you get it. These things were here long before us, and I have a feeling they'll be here for millions of years after we're toast. Captain Hook got chirped for getting his hand eaten by a croc. The guy literally survived a dinosaur attack, and everybody's bringing clocks to work trying to roast the guy. Give them a break. And finally, number one, chickens. Sometimes in order to get a kid to eat, you tell them that it's chicken. Hey, it's chicken, it's like chicken nuggets, yum, right? But with recent studies, we're gonna have to start telling them that it tastes like dinosaurs. Since the 19th century, we've drawn an anatomical line between birds and dinosaurs, like I mentioned at the beginning of this list, and it turns out birds are the only living true dinosaur today. And we eat them for breakfast. How do you like your eggs? Sans dinosaur. They found a fossil way back that looked like a bird, but had no beak. It had wings and feathers, but its face looked like a dinosaur. So we called this an Archaeoteryx, which sounds pretty cool. So scientists are curious where these beaks came from. I mean, look at a pelican, for example. Hi, where did that come from, Mr. Big Nose? Well, the recently discovered pterosaur might have some answers. It was called the Icondraco Avatar because it greatly resembles one of the flying dragons from the 2009 hit Avatar film. The guy's named after an alien, that's neat. The creature had this crest under its chin that suggests that it once had a throat pouch to store fish. I've been laughing at pigeons for years. Little did I know these dudes were dapping it up with dinosaurs back in the day. My bad. At number 10, the Dunkleostis. Now it may sound silly because it has the word dunk in it, but this thing did not shoot threes. It actually shot its head out at you in 50 milliseconds, quite fast. The Dunkleostis was a 30 foot four long armored fish that originated from the Devonian era. Its fossil was first discovered in 1867 by Dr. David Dunkel. Dunk, dunkle, now you're getting it. So 400 million years ago, this thing was the king during the ages of fish. It swam confidently in subtropical waters, weighing around one ton, and it was kind of a bully, obviously. I mean, look at this thing. It's not his fault, he was born that way. Its massive skull was well equipped with two fangs. Each of those fangs had like 
two sharp points, so it almost had four fangs. Four fangs, two teeth, a lot of trouble. Those teeth would rub against each other as it grew, so as if the massive bonehead wasn't intimidating enough, he's constantly sharpening his teeth waiting for you. Yikes. If you're looking to gaze into the face of fear, head to the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. They name it Dunk. Go see Dunk. Go say what's up to Dunk. Number nine, Meganeuropsis. Moving over to the insect side of history, ew, these guys had a wingspan of 30 inches. Insects two and a half feet wide flying towards your face. No, thank you. Meganeuropsis lived 250 million years ago. They greatly resemble dragonflies, but they weren't. They flew around before pterosaurs, birds, or bats ever did. The extinct griffin fly was discovered in 1939 in Kansas by a man named Frank Morton Carpenter. He was the insect curator at the Museum of Comparative Zoology at Harvard University. They had teeth and scientists believed that they were as fast as dragonflies today. Teeth and speed plus wingspan equals I'm dead, we're all dead. Fossil remains have also shown us that these guys would spend some time around water. Imagine being in a kayak and this thing comes and just takes a bite out of your neck. No, I don't wanna imagine that. I'm glad these things are gone. Save most of the animals, but also don't save all of them, you know? And before we continue on with this scary list, if you wanna go ahead and give us a thumbs up, give us a thumbs up for animals that are extinct. What a weird thing to ask, but you know what I'm talking about. Those likes do add up and they give us a lot of support here at the studio to then fire stuff out back at you. It's a circle of life. Hit that thumbs up, you're amazing. Thanks, back to the list. Number eight, Megalodon. Louis Agassiz discovered the Megalodon shark for the first time way back in 1843. He was a Swiss-born American naturalist and geologist. Now he discovered some amazing details about glacier activity and extinct fish. He's brilliant, but one of those extinct fish just happened to be the tooth shark, AKA Megalodon. Or as Jason Statham says, Megalodon. A little bit more menacing. It lived everywhere in the world but Antarctica, really. It favored warm oceans, but similarly to a great white, it generates heat when it moves. So it can survive most places and therefore kill you in most places. The largest recorded megalodon came in at 59 feet, about the same length as a bowling alley. If this thing were still alive today, there's no chance our boy Jay Stath could take it. Its seven foot wide jaws had plenty of trunk space for a swimmer and its five rows of razor sharp teeth ensured it didn't get out. Number seven, Seven, Arctidus smilus. Lions and tigers and Arctidus smilus, oh my. Also known as the short-faced bear. This thing went extinct only a mere 11,000 years ago. It was the fastest running bear that ever existed, so already we have trouble. Its legs were much longer than today's bears. If this thing stood up on its hind legs, it would be about 13 feet tall. That's like two of me in a bit, that's nuts. Today's bears also have different shaped toes. Today they have pigeon toes, but back then these guys had straight forward facing feet, so they were athletes. These guys were doing 200 meter hurdles. Biologists conclude that the short faced bear only ate meat. So it was basically Joe Rogan. And given the fact that it was 11,000 years ago, I feel very badly for humans that found it. Well, with its powerful nose, realistically, it would be tracking them, so it found them. It needed about 35 pounds of meat a day to survive, so one Christina Ritchie ought to do it. That's a lot of porridge for one bear. Number six, Europe Terida. We look now to the largest scorpion to ever exist. Part of the arthropod family, insects, spiders, and crabs, all that gross stuff. It was nicknamed the sea scorpion and it swam the waters about 450 million years ago. They would be about eight feet long with their claws swinging another three feet out to snip at you. So an 11 foot sea scorpion is what we're talking about here. Nice. The first sea scorpion was discovered in 1899 in Melbourne, Australia. You know, the place with all the giant scary stuff over there. Number five. Thylacosmolus. I saw an opossum a couple weeks back, like outside in real life. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I had no idea what the fuck I was looking at for numerous minutes. Marsupials are fascinating but odd creatures to see with your own two eyes. But back five million years ago, they were much more of a threat and a little bit scarier looking. Thylacosmolus looks a lot like a saber tooth, but it was part of a group called Sparasodons, a cousin to our marsupials now. Its name translates to terrible pouched knife, which sounds excellent, and it used to live in what's now South America. Elmer Riggs discovered the remains in 1920, and only recently have we figured out that it wasn't a cat, although it might look quite similar. Its teeth are intimidating, but this beast didn't have incisors. Its lower jaws weren't fused together either. These teeth were triangular in shape like a claw rather than a flat blade-like tooth. Either way, I'm happy not having this thing take a bite near my neck. Let's keep it that way. Go away. Stay in history. Number four, 
T-Rex. Of course we have to mention a T-Rex on a list of creatures we're glad went extinct. Tiny arms, massive head, loud scream, we've seen Jurassic Park, come on. About 70 million years ago, this big fella would roam what is now North America. And on average, it would be about 20 feet tall, eight tons, stretching a haunting 40 feet long, and its jaws are the main bread and butter here. We laugh at this thing for not having long arms, as if it even matters. 50 to 60 razor sharp serrated teeth, about nine inches long, would help it digest 500 pounds of meat in one serving. Henry Farfield Osborne sounds like a Marvel villain. He's actually the president of the American Museum of Natural History, and he named the behemoth back in 1905. The name T-Rex comes from the Greek and Latin words meaning Tyrant Lizard King. If you thought the only Lizard King was Godzilla, think again. Number three, Elasmosaurus. First discovered in 1868, a military doctor in Kansas found this creature's fossil, passed it along to American paleontologist Edward Cope, who named it the Plesiosaur. Its neck contained 71 vertebrae, and it was super long, which came in handy during those deep dinner dives. And when I say long, the Elasmosaurus was about 50 feet in length, so it didn't need to get that close to the surface of the water to get some air. There's people out there that actually believe that the Loch Ness Monster is just one of these things still lurking about. Its teeth were sharp enough to eat anything that it could fit into its mouth. And just two years ago, scientists have unearthed the largest known Elasmosaur. This thing has been sitting there since the Cretaceous period, waiting for us. And I sure hope we don't find any more because one water dragon is enough for me. Number two, Leopleurodon. Translating to smooth sided teeth, the Leopleurodon was anything but a smooth sailor. It was a massive marine reptile from the Mesozoic era discovered in the 19th century. It was excavated in France back in 1873 and all they had was three teeth hence the smooth nickname. But when it was featured in 1999's Walking with Dinosaurs BBC series, it was shown as this massive 80 foot long pillosaur. But they were basing that size off of its skull, which we now know is much larger than the rest of its body. That's normal. Pliosaurs were the apex predators in Europe. 160 million years ago, most of it was covered in shallow water, and it used its four flipper feet to stalk its prey, and researchers believed that its snout was a key asset in hunting. They didn't have any gills, so they did need to come up for air every now and then. But imagine seeing that today. I see a turtle in the water, and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna wait it out for a bit. Number one, Titanoboa. I'm not a snake guy. I'll start by saying that. Spiders, sure, whatever. Snakes? Get lost. I don't like the way they wrap their body around you and squeeze like anacondas, it's so scary. But 60 million years ago, the movie Anaconda would have been a lot shorter. The movie would have been like six minutes long. In 2004, its remains were discovered after an excavation of a coal mine in Colombia. It was found in rock dating back to 60 million years ago. And after studying several of its fossils, scientists believe the average size was 50 feet long and three feet wide. It was the largest known predator on the planet after dinosaurs went extinct until 40 million years later when the megalodon popped up. That's a pretty large window to be ruling the earth. Next time you see a garter snake, imagine it's the size of your garage and then have a panic attack like I did scripting this list. 